Will South Africa be barred from the Olympic Games for the Disabled? Hello again. A row has flared up in Canada over the Olympic Games for severely disabled people. The Games are due to open in Toronto in August, a week after the main Olympic Games finish in Montreal. But the Canadian government has said it will refuse to give any money to the Games for the disabled if the South African team takes part. Well, this is because of Canada's policy of condemning apartheid, the separation of black and white people in South Africa. Canada's decision is especially surprising because for these Olympics, the South African team of 22 disabled athletes has made a great break with tradition and includes nine black members. The row is particularly embarrassing to Pierre Trudeau, Canada's prime minister, as he is also patron of the Toronto Games. The Olympic Games for the disabled were first held in 1948, and the idea for them came from Stoke Mandeville Hospital in England. They're held every four years, usually in the same country as the main Olympics. They include sports like fencing, basketball, table tennis, and field and track events. In some sports, the competitors can even reach as high a standard as athletes without handicaps. These Olympics have become increasingly popular. For instance, this year, 1,700 people from over 60 countries will compete in Toronto. But the Canadian decision not to give money to support the Games, if the South African team does take part, has caused angry reaction. British officials who masterminded the Games are particularly cross. As far as our South African member organisations are concerned, they are absolutely entitled to take part. They cannot be banned by any government. It's important to us, it's important to the whole world, but it's terribly important to South Africa itself because they are struggling and they have achieved integration of all blacks, whites and coloured. And it's up to us to support them. And if we ban them, that's certainly not going to help them in South Africa. Well, now the British officials are trying to persuade the Canadian government to change its mind. And they hope for a final decision within the next few days. A report out today claims a very unwelcome record for Britain. It says that more children are killed and injured on our roads than in any other country in Europe. The report in the Automobile Association's magazine Drive says that the number of accidents to children has now become an epidemic, especially among people between the ages of five and nine. Heavy traffic on crowded roads spell danger for everyone. But the report says too many parents let tiny children onto the streets on their own. There's not enough road safety training in schools, says the report, and too many lollipop men and women are elderly. The job could be given to senior school children who would react much quicker. Warning posters have been issued by the government, and £2 million has been spent on road safety projects for children in the past four years. But more research is needed, says the report, especially into the cause of accidents. Well, a government spokesman told me this afternoon that the number of road accidents to children is very worrying, but at least the figures for deaths and injuries have dropped by 20% in the past few years. Another chapter in the long and checkered career of the transatlantic liner Queen Mary. She's now moored off the Pacific coast of America, but her new career as a floating museum doesn't seem to have been too successful because she's fallen a million pounds into debt. In her heyday, the old lady of the Atlantic was the true queen of the London to New York run. Back in 1938, she held the blue ribbon for the fastest Atlantic crossing. In 1967, her final voyage took her to Long Beach City in California. She was to be turned into a floating museum of the sea, a hotel and a restaurant. But the cost of refitting and maintaining her has turned out to be more than was bargained for. Now, if the museum owners can't pay their million-pound debt within 30 days, the city of Long Beach will take over the Queen Mary. But it seems certain that she won't land in the breaker's yard. Not yet, anyway. And on the other side of the world, a smaller but no less famous ship today made a triumphant entry into the Port of London through Tower Bridge. Great Britain II, of course, won the round-the-world yacht race when she sailed into Dover eight days ago. Earlier today, another celebrated sailor, Mr Edward Heath, 
joined Captain Roy Mullinder and his 15-man crew for the short journey from Greenwich to Tower Pier. Two of the world's best-known skaters may have given their last performance. Rumour has it that Irina Rodnina and Alexander Zaitsev of the Soviet Union are about to retire. The husband and wife team are the Olympic, European and World Gold Medalists, but their appearance last night at the World Figure Skating Championships in Sweden may have been their last in international competitions. They were on great form, though, despite the fact that Miss Rodnina hadn't been feeling too well and had made two minor mistakes earlier on. But the judges had no doubts that this was a world-beating performance. So, on what may have been their last appearance, Rodnina and Zaitsev are once again champions of the world. It's her eighth world title in a row and his fourth, and whatever happens, they're already in the record books. And, to the, to the, and Britain's uh, skating star, John Curry, will be trying to win the men's world title in Sweden tonight. Only one Briton has ever won it. That was nearly 40 years ago. At the moment, John Curry is in second place. Well, today, for the first time ever, a competition to find Britain's champion plant talker was held in London. Seven finalists arrived with their plants for the judging, and Anita Evans went along to see what they had to say. I'm very pleased. Yes, I think you'll do. If you travel home as well as you've come down, I think we'll be fine. A lot of people talk to their plants these days, and those who do claim it's the attention they get that makes all the difference to how their plants grow. But it's not what you say that matters, they told me, it's how you say it. Here's Douglas Sinclair from Glasgow. Or on a Saturday morning after strains of a week's work, I uh, might go in and say, hello, my darlings, or walk over to one of my favourite plants and, and lift it up and look at full in the bloom and say, who loves you, baby? In all, 300 people entered the competition, but the winner today by a long stalk was Mrs Francis George from Stoke-on-Trent. Aren't you my pet? Eh? Have you bath? Eh? Come on, have a bath. There we are. It's real soapy water, this is, you know. Close your eyes and it won't sting. There you are. <laughs> Come here. So there you are. Bath your sick plants in soapy water and be sure that you speak quietly and kindly to them. Well, that's all from me and from Newsround for this week. I'll see you again, I hope, at the same time on Monday. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>